I've got five quick and easy St. Patrick's Day DIY ideas for you today, so let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. If we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Kicking it off with a shamrock DIY, I am taking three pieces of felt, one white, dark green, and a lighter green, and I'm cutting out two shamrock shapes out of each color. And I <laughs> thought I would save some time by doing it like, you know, layering up the material. Don't do that. Just, just cut them out one by one. It'll be neater and easier on you in the end. Now that I've got those cut out, I am taking some hot glue. And of course, always be careful when you're using hot glue, especially like with material, because the material is thin and you could burn yourself. So you don't want to do that. And I'm taking some stuffing. I had some old pillows I was going to toss out and I thought, you know what? I could use that stuffing for DIY projects. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm using it to make some kind of like puffy or like padded pillow type <laughs> shamrocks. And I'm just hot gluing around and leaving an opening, of course, at the bottom so that I can stuff them. And then once I get all the way around, I'm going to take these dowels that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to stuff them inside. And then once I get all three done, I'm going to hot glue them to the top of that wood slice that you see there. And I'll show you at the end. Oh, no, I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> oh, I hot glued them, but I'll show you the end result at the end. And I wanted to tell you, this is part of the Crafted by Corey Minis Challenge. And there's a whole playlist and I'm going to have her channel linked in the description box below. It's always a fun one, so I hope you check it out. The next DIY, I'm taking the It's a Beach Thing <laughs> house shape from Dollar Tree. And I just, you know, used my heat gun to take off that little embellishment on the top. And then it has paper on it. Ah, oh, just can't. I mean, you know. So I just soak it off because I don't need the paper on there. don't want the paper on there. I let that soak for a little bit. And then I just kind of start scrubbing it off. That little scraper tool really, really wasn't working very well. So I just get that, you know, dish rag extra wet. And I kind of just like, I don't know, scrape it off or kind of like scrub it off, I guess. And it works pretty well and it gets the job done. And so after it has dried, I then take some of my paint and white paint and I just give it a really good coat all over. Now, fun fact, at the top, there was a roof little thing that I took off. <laughs> a roof little thing. Piece of wood that, that was the roof shape. And um, it had little like, I don't know, like little tack nails or whatever there. So just be careful when you're working with your project. Make sure you know what, what can scratch you or hurt you. And after that I've all dried, I cut out this decal. And this decal has little words, little letters. And so some of the stuff didn't transfer over. So I had to use a paint pen to kind of fill in the gaps. You really can't tell when you're looking at it from above, but I can tell it's there. And then I thought the top needed a little something. So I cut out a shamrock shape from some craft paper that I had on hand, hot glued that um, roof line back on and glued on the little shamrock. Now for the, um, I'm pairing it with this other DIY and it's the craft paper that I just used, but I'm tracing out this little house shape. And then I'm going to use a glue stick to glue it to the frame. This particular one had a piece of glass. Why is there nothing going on right now? Oh, I want to go get my glue stick. Anyway, so there was a piece of glass that went with this, but I wasn't going to be using it because I didn't really want the glass because it's reflective. And so I just took off the glass and set it aside. Maybe I'll use it for something else using that glue stick that I got from Dollar Tree and trying to position it on top of the house shape and I'm repositioning it because I didn't get it right the first time. Then I'm taking my little finger sander and I'm going over the edges. Now this is a little more flimsy. So I ended up having to take scissors and cut the rest of the excess off, but it all works in the end. This particular frame though was kind of a plasticky material. It wasn't really like wood or whatever. So I don't know if it had something on it or whatever, but anyway, I sanded it a little bit with my finger sander and then I'm just taking some brown paint and going around the outside of that frame because I want it to kind of match the other little house shape that I just did because this is going to be a layering piece. It'll be behind that other piece, but you'll see that all at the end. Oh, hello, Captain. I guess I didn't show you me putting the, um, you know, the whole thing together. <laughs> you'll see it in a minute. So now this little crate is from Dollar Tree and I'm taking this really pretty green color 
It's by Anita's All Purpose Acrylic Paint. It's the color Shamrock. How appropriate, right? So I'm giving it a good coat all over because it's going to become a little book stack for me. And I cut out another decal and it says, let the shenanigans begin. And I'm transferring it onto this book stack. And y'all, <laughs> fun fact, I thought I had lost the G and then it actually ended up being on my hand. And so I was just going to start over. But anyway, I found it on my hand. So I added it on and I added some Baker twine also from Dollar Tree around the one end. I was going to put the little coin on, but I didn't. Okay, this is my favorite DIY. It's the last DIY for today, I think. Is it? Yeah. So I saw this on Made on Maple, and she was able to take that word lucky off. She used her heat gun, and she was able to get that off. I used my heat gun. I thought I was going to burn the wood. So I like, set it on fire. It didn't, it didn't detach. So instead, I'm having to kind of paint around with some detail brushes, and I'm just giving it a good coat of black paint. And the, of course, the black paint covers really well. And I'm just going around. But um, I don't know what her trick was to get it off. I don't know if she used some, you know, I don't know, magic or whatever. But this is what we're working with. And this is how I had to do mine. So I just absolutely loved how hers turned out. It She had done the lucky, the letters lucky, in a rainbow pattern. So that's what I'm doing here. And of course... Um, I think there's like a little acronym or RG boy or something. I can't remember what the acronym is. Anyway, I'm putting down it in the color of the rainbow. RG biv. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to think of that. But anyway, if you know it, put it in the comments below what the acronym is. My sister knows it and she would know it off the top of her head because my sister is just like super smart. So doing the colors of the rainbow and... I'm going to show you at the end because I've got some thoughts on this, but I'll show you at the end what I mean. Because I want to work on the gold coin section and I had some gold vinyl and I'm just kind of cutting it out to the shape and realized I should have flipped it when I did the thing. Anyway, I didn't. So here we are. And I just took the nylon off. I have a little splicer tool that kind of gives it a cut. I use that on my stickers and I thought, let me try to see how these gold coins are going to look. I didn't want them super shiny though. So I'm cutting out some more shapes with this little die cut thing that I have. It's a one in a half inch circle, I believe. And so I'm cutting those out and then I'm going to put those on top of the gold coins. Cause like I said, I didn't want them super shiny. So uh, I was like, why are we pausing? <laughs> I add some just to kind of give dimension behind. And then I'm adding the vinyl gold vinyl to the top of those coins and then hot gluing those down and then I'm just going to kind of layer and stack it up until I think it looks good and then I thought the cauldron or the pot whatever you want to call it looked a little plain so I'm taking some I think this is elephant the color elephant and I'm just taking a little bit and dry brushing it around just to give it some dimension and kind of give it some character and socks he's gonna he's gonna try to grab something <laughs> Anyway, I just had to leave that in. He cracks me up. So this is how it all turned out. I love it. You can use this for a tear tray. You can use this for a vignette. You can even hang that cauldron with the word lucky on it on like your front door, like on a wreath or something. And what I was going to tell you about the lucky, when you're standing kind of far back, you can't really tell what the word says. So I was thinking maybe I should outline it with white or something like each individual letter. I'm not sure. Give me your thoughts below. But again, thank you so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And don't forget, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or something, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye.